Hey everyone, I've got some exciting news to share. Today I'm announcing my new range of Series D microcontroller boards. This is something I've been working on for a very long time and I can't believe I managed to keep it secret for as long as I have, mostly secret. But today is the announcement. I'm gonna show you what the boards are, talk to you about what Series D is, but it's not the release. The release is happening next week. But now that it's public, now that I'm talking about it, I can finally start uploading product pages. I can put files on GitHub and I can start talking about it without people not understanding what it is. My new Series D boards all have one specific thing in common. They have a dual antenna layout. So in the past, I would sell a tiny S3 with an onboard antenna and a tiny S3 with a UFL connector, and you had to choose which one you were gonna buy and which one you were gonna use in your project. And you couldn't add an external antenna to a tiny S3 with an onboard antenna. Now, my Series D boards have a dual antenna They've got an onboard antenna and a UFL connector on the same board. There's an RF switch that allows you to change which antenna you're gonna use in your code by toggling a GPIO. There are currently four boards in my range and we're gonna have a look at them now. First in the lineup is the Tiny S3D. And we've got the Feather S3D and the Pro S3D. Same boards we had before. It's Tiny S3, Feather S3, Pro S3, but now these are the Series D variants of them. And we've now got the brand new Edge S3D, which is our first reusable module. It uses an M.2 B key edge connector at the bottom, but in no way is it compatible with your computer, so please don't plug it into computer. It just uses this format for reusability on a carrier board. Now let's have a look at the Tiny S3D. It's the same as before, except of course you can see that there is an onboard antenna and a UFO connector for an external antenna. And by default, the onboard antenna is selected via a little tiny EBD RF switch that is controlled via user code via a GPIO. So by default, the GPIO is set to the onboard antenna and you can encode change it between the two. The board also has a new charge IC and a nice squared C fuel gauge. So there's no more ADC pin to connect to the battery to read the voltage. You now get to use the I2C IC, which allows you to get the battery voltage, the battery percentage, the charge state, and everything else. Here's a look at the back of the Tiny S3D. The board's exactly the same as the original Tiny S3, except I did need to make it about 1.3 millimeters longer to be able to fit the RF layout in. And I've switched the 1515 RGB LED over to a 1010 sized RGB LED. The Feather S3D has not changed in size at all, but a few things have been rearranged on the board. There's the onboard antenna, there's the UFL connector, our switch in the middle. The mounting hole was on the other side. It's now over on this side to be able to fit the RF layout in. And one of the Stembo QT connectors was at the end but they're both vertical connectors now. So you've got LDO1 and LDO2, or I2C bus one, I2C bus two. It has a new battery charge IC and I2C fuel gauge, and also has the one by one millimeter RGB LED. Otherwise, everything's the same. Then we have the Pro S3D. This one's changed a little bit as well. The board is actually two millimeters longer. It's drop-in compatible still, the footprint is the same for the headers, but I had to make the board a little bit longer to be able to fit the RF layout in and still have the battery connector on there. The battery connector was at the back facing backwards, it's now on the side. UFL connector here, onboard antenna there, little RF switch in the middle. And again, it's got the new charge IC, the new fuel gauge, and also has the one by one millimeter RGB LED. And there's the back of the board. Otherwise, exactly the same drop-in replacement. And lastly, we have brand new Edge S3D, my first reusable module. It's a complete microcontroller board though. It's got an ESP32 S3 Pico with eight mega flash and two megabytes of PS RAM. It's got full 3.3 volt circuitry, battery charging, I2C fuel gauge, ESD protection, power and charge LEDs. It's got the dual antenna, so the onboard antenna and the UFL connector at the top for an external antenna with the RF switch in the middle. It's currently the two megabyte PS RAM version. There may be an eight megabyte PS RAM version in the future. Right now I'm not making them due to lack of availability of silicon. So for the moment, it's just the two megabyte version. The board itself also has an eight port IO expander on the bottom corner here. Little tiny chip just in there, 
which breaks out an additional 8 I.O. on the M.2 edge connector at the bottom. So you've got power domains on this side here, 3.3 volt, 5 volts, VBAT over those pins with ground at the back. And then on the left hand side, almost all the pins are I.O. broken out. Almost all the native I.O. is broken out. A couple of I.O. are required on the board, one for switching the antenna, interrupt for the fuel gauge, but the rest are broken out. And then the I.O. expander for an additional 8 I.O. for projects that need more but they're not native. So you have to go via a library with the IO Expander IC. And that's it. The first four boards in my Series D range. These will be available from me starting next week and they'll be available from resellers, hopefully within two or three weeks time. Confirmed so far, uh, Mauser, Adafruit and Pimeroni. And I'm sure some of my smaller resellers will take them on as well. I'm very excited about this. Uh, as I said, I've been working on it for a very long time and I cannot wait to see what happens when they get into your hands and see what awesome projects you make with them. Okay, catch you later. Bye.